Welcome to Insight, produced in partnership with KLCS in Los Angeles. Today we are chatting with Joe Arquios, Executive Director of 826LA, and he has generously agreed to share some of his experience with us. Thank you, Joel, for joining us today. Thank you for having me. So literacy and writing. Mm -hmm. Writing, writing, it's so important to everything that we do, whether we're trying to be creative or whether we're in the workplace. Talk about the importance of writing and how 826 conveys that joy of writing yeah. to others. Yeah, 826 LA focuses on getting young people excited about writing. Um, it's not necessarily the, the first thing you think of, you know, when you ask a kid, like, what's your favorite thing to do? Um, but we, we've tried to create um, spaces that really uh, give children an opportunity to be themselves um, and to uh, acknowledge their creative side. Uh, we have centers in Echo Park. We have a center in Mar Vista as well. And we have these, um, you know, they're writing centers for children who can come after school and get help on homework and do fun creative writing projects with us. We also go into schools throughout LA and we support teachers in the classroom as well with writing. And our approach is, is not um, an approach where we're teaching necessarily how to write. We really want kids to sort of find their voices. And so we want to give them the space and to acknowledge that they already have an intelligence and they already have stories. And we want to make them feel comfortable in the space to be able to tell those stories. Um, and so, you know, we train lots of volunteers. I mean, our work is made possible by volunteers who many are professional writers. Um, others are uh, folks from all walks of life who come in and sit side by side with a child and give them the attention uh, they need to help them develop their writing and, and, uh, and develop stories from, you know, a small little uh, first drafts into sometimes three page, four page uh, stories that can be published in books that we put out. I remember one of my first experiences um, with with uh, writing were, w w was being corrected and uh, being told that I wasn't writing properly. Mm -hmm. I was being creative. I was being uh, my sentences were disconnected. My ideas were flowing on to uh, through my hand onto the page, and I turned it in, and I was told, "Oh, that's not right. That's not right." Mm -hmm. And and it needs to be this way. Now, luckily, I didn't necessarily listen to that person, Good. but, but um, that is not your approach. No, um, you know, it's, uh, I, I taught high school for many years before I got involved with this work, and uh, you know, a lot of times you have a classroom, 40 students in a class, and you want to give feedback as much as you can, uh, but you have up to five classes, 30 or 40 kids in a class, it's tough to give that undivided attention. And so sometimes, you know, teachers find themselves having to to have less time to give that feedback and be able to, to set aside. And so it might become a frustrating sort of um, experience like, like the one you, you uh, just told us about. But you know, for us, it's really, that's the main thing we do is writing. And so we, we, we're really lucky that we get to focus just on that. And you know, we're able to create the space and the recognition um, that writing takes time and it's a developmental process and it's not going to be perfect. Um, and, but we don't want to scare kids away from thinking that, you know, there's only one way to do things. And so um, we create an opportunity for them to sort of find themselves through the process and to, and, and to, and to find that voice that they all have within them as well. Um, you know, one of the interesting things about our organization as well is that we're actually we have storefronts. We have these time travel marts. So you're not walking into a regular after school program or a daytime program. You're, you're coming in through a time travel mart. We literally sell things like woolly mammoth meat and cans, uh, robot milk. Uh, we have uh, just all kinds of fun things that really spark the imagination. So when kids are walking in, um, they know they're not just walking into any ordinary place. And as they come into the back space where we have our, our big tables and chairs, you know, it's, it doesn't feel like school. And so we give kids the chance to really um, get out of their sort of normal day-to-day -day routines and come in and meet adults from the community um, and sit side by side. And the purpose is to really help that child, you know, um, connect with, with this person and also with writing. So yeah, we, we spend a lot of time really trying to, to break down any sort of barriers to uh, a student feeling comfortable or, or feeling like uh, they're going to get scared from the process of writing. Again, the intentionality is really important. Uh, part of the uh, issue that one has is creating an intimidating environment to uh, convey knowledge, right? The more intimidating the environment is, the more difficult it is to convey knowledge. And by going into these storefronts and creating an embracing, fun, 
interactive, creating slightly crazy atmosphere, right? You're ta basically taking away the intimidation factor, aren't you? Yeah, that's and that's, that's intentional. Well, it's intentional, um, and it's not. You know, the kids are certainly the main focus of that, um, but they're not the main people shopping in the stores. So we actually have real stores, and it also opens up to the community as well. I mean, we've taken the retail experience and we flipped it on its head, um, and we're able to actually raise you know, funds to help us cover some of the costs of our rents and things as well. It also helps us recruit volunteers, people who are very uh, much seeking for something different to do in their communities to help young people. But children are the real reason it, it all exists. And uh, yeah, I mean, we, we think that, you know, children just have such an incredible imagination and they, they need it to be fostered. And I think a lot of times, sadly, um, it gets crushed. I mean, the experience that you just you know, mentioned earlier, I mean, that, that changes a lot of kids' lives' trajectories and they feel like, I'm not good enough at this. I don't have anything worth um, sharing with the world. And so we just want to kind of create a space where they're, the, they're the, the leaders and we want them to be the leaders of their lives, the leaders of their stories, and, and to really sort of begin the process of reconnecting um, with, with what I think all of us um, kind of lose as we get older, um, and, but we want them to keep it and to hone it and to, and to uh, you know, celebrate it. Let's talk a little bit about the fundamentals of what writing is, because mm -hmm. nowadays we live in a multimedia society in which we are absorbing information through audio and visual means. Mm -hmm. And we have a tendency to neglect writing. The publishing industry has died in part because of it. The newspapers are, are going by the wayside. But actual text, encoding into text, there's an actual skill set that connects to pretty much everything else. Mm -hmm. And so let's talk a little bit about the fundamental of writing. What is writing actually? What is writing really? Yeah, I mean, you know, at its core, it's, it's, it's a form of communication. Um, it's a way to connect with uh, one's thoughts, a way to make sense of the world around us, to be able to piece together um, ideas and construct a narrative that allows you to express something and hopefully a, a point of view or a perspective. Um, depending on, 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 on what sort of writing you're embarking on, but it's really the only sort of way we have to know what someone is thinking. Um, I, I tell children often, um, you know, I used to teach history, and I'd say, you know, history, we don't have history unless there's something written on paper, unless we actually have thoughts. And so it's really a documentation of our, of our heritage, of everything we're about, and it's the most fundamental thing um, that, that we can point to to show you know, um, our, our own thinking and our history. And, you know, I think that with the changes and with, you know, writing was also uh, on a sort of, came at a time of our own evolution and sort of these new technologies are also evolving us in different ways. But I do think that the fundamental practice of, of writing um, is something I hope never goes away. Um, but it's, you know, it's been shown to also just be really um, helpful to people um, in a social emotional way as well. It's a great way to, to help, especially young people. We work with a lot of young people who come from pretty, pretty difficult situations. And writing can be a way to help them work through those problems. It's a way that they can have no judgment. It's them, pad of paper, um, and they can get their thoughts down. And we've seen a lot of kids' lives transformed by having that freedom um, to be able to express something that maybe they can't tell a parent or they can't tell a friend. And so it's, I think it saves lives in a lot of ways. Um, and so yeah, for me, writing is all those things. And it's really the, the pathway to communication. And I see it as a way for people to sort their ideas and to become more confident in what they're trying to say or who, what they're trying to convey to the world. Writing is taking our ideas, your ideas, my ideas, and it's putting it into a rule-based form where you can share your ideas with me although I might have a completely different lived, ba lived experience. Mm -hmm. I might have in, in completely different ways of thinking, but that rule, rules basis, if we share it, mm -hmm. you can write and I can read and I can understand, at least in part, some of what is going on in your head. And when you're writing, you're thinking about me, the reader, mm -hmm. because you're, you're trying to write so that you connect with me. Mm -hmm. And so you're, you're creating some f skill sets that later on are so important in any kind of endeavor. Right. If you're going to become part of a cooperative, whether it's working in a group of people or uh, creating art or, or trying to do something together, 
that communication skill is really the fundamental of group cooperation, of communication, of encoding, mm -hmm. and all these different skills connect to just the act of writing. Exactly, and, and yeah, you said it right, audience being such an important aspect to to uh, helping people understand or writers understand that you know there is that personal aspect of writing, but you know uh, your writing can go much further. And knowing your, your your audience is essential. We have a fun way of doing that with young kids. Uh, we introduce them to the uh, concept of audience uh, through a workshop we do called Writing for Pets. And so uh, we bring in all kinds of animals, from parakeets to fish to dogs and cats and. The idea is that they have to write a story to these animals, and they have to know what uh, words not to use or what words to use. A lot of uh, with dogs, you know, have to be careful about using the word walk or mentioning food. Um, and it's just a fun way to kind of show them that you know, audience, uh, you know, is an important aspect of of, of, of writing and what you're producing. And uh, but we have, you know, we also work with uh, high school students and college personal statements are an area that we do a lot of work in and. You know, for the kids that we help, um, who so come. These are the older kids that are, are the, that are thinking about college applications. Absolutely, it's a it's a huge part of our work, especially this time of year, all the way through uh, application season. And we uh, we have a, a method that we've developed um, that really focuses on helping our students convey their stories, um, because so many of the students we work with come from really challenging backgrounds. They don't have the extracurricular necessarily that you know the others that they're competing with for spots have. They um, a lot of them are working jobs to support their families. A lot of them are you know playing the role of a parent to help a younger sibling, um, and so they have these incredible stories that really have made an impact on their performance in school. And so for a lot of them, you know, helping them really make sense of these stories and put them on create a, a very clear way of communicating this to the admissions officers has been a, a very um, helpful and powerful tool for, for young folks who want to get into college but just you know, may not have the grades, um, but need to make sure that the admissions officer understands that their situation is, is much more different. And they can bring a perspective to those schools that, that is really uh, necessary to, to hear and, and to learn from. But we have also have some great um, uh, partnerships. We, we uh, have a wonderful relationship with the Broad Museum. As they opened up, um, we, they wanted to bring um, learning experiences for students into their centers. So they came out to us and we helped them develop the field trip program that they use. Uh, where they bring students from all uh, from all parts of Los Angeles into the Broad, and the students then are engaged in writing activities that we've helped develop. So we have a relationship with them. The Hammer Museum, also at UCLA, we do an ongoing workshop there. Um, that's a contracted relationship we've built with them. So we're looking to ways. You know, we may not be able to serve all the kids in the district, but we're looking for ways to um, share our knowledge. And another way is through our college personal statement support. We've been contracting with schools to train teachers um, on how to use our methods to help even more students with, it, with this kind of uh, support. Well, Joel Arguillos, thank you so much for sharing the work of 826LA and all this wonderful, wonderful knowledge that you are transmitting to young people and for the creativity that those young people give to us. Thank you so much for your work and thank you so much for your insights. Thank you so much.